Today, we're with my friend Fabrizio Trentacosti. If you're in Italy, you've probably heard of him. But to the English-speaking community, this may be your first glimpse. He's the blogger behind Truki Facebook, an extremely popular Italian resource for all things Facebook, which, at the time of this interview, hosts over half a million monthly readers. He has a broad array of digital marketing skills and a deep knowledge and ability in blogging and Facebook. Today's interview, How to Achieve Blogging Success, is designed to help busy bloggers, marketers, and business owners discover what works with blogging. Fabrizio Trentacosti is an entrepreneur, blogger, digital marketing consultant at the ripe young age of 29. Facebook and social media expert, teacher, speaker, digital marketing influencer, and currently offering workshops and seminars around Italy, and a new member of Uhura Network's digital marketing team. Welcome, Fabrizio. Welcome to you. Thank you. Now, first off, uh, we want to learn a little bit about you personally, and then about your blog, Truki Facebook. <laughs> yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for this interview. It's a great honor for me to talk about myself and my brand in a Yuhuru blog. And this is my first interview in English, so please be polite, Peter. <laughs> so about me, you already said I'm a digital entrepreneur and that some years ago turned uh, this passion into a full-time job. I love challenging myself um, in every aspect of my life, and this uh, has been surely uh, my biggest challenge. So uh, this thing about the blogging uh, as a career, blogging as a success career, it's, uh, it's something that has been following for my entire life now. <laughs> oh, not probably not for the entire life, but for, yeah, almost 10 years. So truckyfacebook.com is the most popular uh, blog about Facebook in Italy. As you said, it currently gets half a million visits. And uh, uh, it is very important for me because it has given me the opportunity to learn almost every aspect uh, of the Facebook platform. So um, this is also because uh, with the blog, there is a community behind it. Uh, which today counts more than 50k users on Facebook and it has also a forum uh, since a couple of years uh, and um, a support forum where people can ask community and I can reply and uh, this is something that as we we'll, we'll look into it has given me the opportunity to be um, an expert in this field. Yeah, thank you. And if you don't mind, maybe Taking us back, um, you know, five years back uh, to be exact this year, uh, to Truki Facebook's beginning in 2009. Uh, and maybe tell us a specific story about those early days on your blog and, and really get specific about that time and, and what it was. Okay, back in the days, I was actually following a different career. I was working in international organizations. And it was in 2009, so five years ago. And I remember I was working at the United Nations in New York, and I remember specifically uh, calling you, Peter, and um, we planned a little trip in California. It was a trip of one week, which then turned out to be a longer trip for three months. And during those uh, during those three months, we planned uh, many, many things. We created multilingual projects, we created website, we did a lot of stuff, and we also created new blogs. I was already a blogger. I had a blog about tips and tricks uh, on the web, uh, about technology and internet, and I was uh, looking at Facebook growth, Facebook massive growth, and very, I, I was very interested in it. So Facebook was growing everywhere, uh, especially in Italy, and, um, so 2008 and 9. and so I decided to write a blog on it. 
to do a tips and tricks blog about it. So we started this blog, uh, and we called it in Italian Trucchi Facebook, and in English Tricks Facebook. So that that was the 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 story behind it. Yes, it was a a crazy time when we were making the transition from um, MySpace and its dominance in the uh, early decade to Facebook's growing popularity throughout 2008 and 2009, and uh, you know, managing the the English side myself and you the Italian side at really uh, enabled us to get really deep in, in learning about this new platform. And though uh, we, I had been involved since high school, uh, college when they first did the college rollout, and and then you joined on quickly because uh, as it grew, the the growth rate was so fast. Um, maybe you could take that because it wasn't all success. You didn't turn Truky Facebook into the blog it is today, um, immediately, uh, maybe take us through your biggest failure uh, and what did you learn from it on this, this path to create this, this brand, this blog? Okay, yeah, I, you probably want to know uh, a little bit more about what happened because as I said, I was following a completely different <laughs> career. I, was, uh, I studied international marketing and I studied uh, development economics. And with that, I also did five internships into international organizations, which is something that it doesn't apply into my blog today. Um, and so after that, I, I also started looking for jobs. So I had a great curriculum. I don't hide that. I was sure about finding my dream job into those international, to big multinational organizations. But after a few months of sending out curricula, I didn't find my dream job, and so I got, uh, I almost got uh, no replies, if they got they were negative, and so I, I was frustrated, frustrated, I, uh, this was a very, very failure for me, but I had the, the idea of turning this failure into something positive, so um, today, uh, my biggest failure uh, turned out to be the greatest opportunity of my life. Because thanks to all those rejections, today I'm not working into some places where I don't want to work. Thanks to all those rejections, today I'm doing something that I like, something related to my passion, something that wakes, up, wakes me up every day with a smile. And so it's something that I will uh, thank uh, all those firms forever. <laughs> and it's something that... in teached me the way on how to look at, at the negatives in the life that we get in our life. That's great. And, and taking such a, it was a very turbulent time uh, for all those who are job hunting and, and coming out of university uh, and, and stepping into the field and, and you really created something special and, and great right in your area of interest. Now. This is a, a transition for from a failure to an aha moment. Um, you started this uh, endeavor five years ago. Started blogging, and but what was that blogging business aha moment? When did you know this was something that really could build and be an income and revenue generation for you? And uh, what was that aha moment? I think it was uh, exactly in that time when I finished my studies and my internships and I was looking for jobs and so uh, at some point I stopped looking for jobs and I said I already have a job or I can create my job and my job is blogging my job is to, to be a digital marketing expert so by that time since I changed uh, the perspective of looking of what I had in my mind, what I already created, that changed everything. It everything exploded uh, at that moment. And I remember, uh, I'm sure you have some question about income, but I remember uh, the month before um, I had a certain income and uh, the month after that I started looking at the blogging as a business uh, tool, as a powerful professional instrument, my income doubled, and that start, that was really uh, the biggest moment because everything turned out to be well then. 
That's that's fantastic. So your aha moment was when you took a situation, changed the perception of that situation, and made it something that empowers you rather than pulls you down, and then focusing on that, and it doubled its output the next month. Uh, yeah. That that's that's very amazing and inspirational. Um, you're right, I do have a question about income and revenue uh, pretty soon, so I, I don't want to jump too early, but the, I, I will be diving into that. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of you know, variation. So over the years, uh, realistically, what has kept you blogging? Uh, because it's a new thing, you stepped into it, you've always blogged since I've known you and, and always had a, an interest, but what kept you blogging? Not just the income, but um, overall, it's, it's not an easy process. Yeah, I've been blogging since 2006, 2007. I started to blog because it was a hobby, it was a passion, and I still look at it in that way. And I think that's very important to say, because if you blog because you had to blog, then it'll soon become a boring activity. If you blog because you like it, you'll soon discover that this is the best way to become an expert in your field, to keep yourself updated with every single news that comes in your market, to establish yourself as an authority in the World Wide Web and, and also in the offline market, and to, and to grow uh, all this follower community that you eventually will create. It's something um, that usually don't hear. It's some, um, I always read that you must blog because it's a business opportunity, you must blog uh, because everybody does it. I think that if you don't like to blog, you shouldn't blog. You should create valuable content, but don't see it as a blog. You should blog because it's an hobby. It's a passion. And then if you can turn that passion into a job, and so I look at it as a professional instrument, then it's, it can be very, very good. Good. And we're talking about blogging as a passion, and you've certainly expressed that passion over the years, but why is blogging so important then for businesses and other marketers? Blogging is surely important for businesses and marketers because when you blog, you are uh, providing your knowledge to everyone. And you, your knowledge, uh, it's made up uh, from the experience that you have and from the researches that you do. Um, so, and when you create a new piece of content, so when you create a new blog post, you usually do a research. You read other blog posts. You discover new blogs. You discover new people talking about the stuff, uh, that stuff. So you you grow your knowledge, and you provide your own input, and you create a new piece of content. And that's already something that that has an incredible incredible value. Plus, when you blog, you then um, uh, open yourself to new potential clients, to your existing client. Um, you, you find new people through search engines, through social networks, uh, through sharing uh, everywhere. And when you write, uh, the third thing is that when you write a piece of content, you have um, comments on it. So there are people who can interact with you. This is uh, the, the most important thing about internet today. There is this in, um, continuous interaction. And uh, all this make you an expert, make you an authority. That's why it's very, very important for businesses. And you, you talked about something that's kind of interesting. You don't have to be an expert to blog, correct? You become an expert when you blog. So I always say, if you have a passion, just start blogging. So after you start blogging, you will soon become an expert. Because it's something that will happen. You just research day by day. You follow other blogs. You follow uh, everyone who's talking about their argument. And you provide your own input. You've been contacted by people that have uh, questions, problems, everything that is related in your field. 
eventually you'll become an expert. There is no nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, force you to become an expert. Uh, now you've been blogging for so long that I, I'm sure you have uh, valuable tools and resources that you use, but um, maybe you could share with us what are some of those resources or tools you use and recommend to others? Okay, that is, um, I could give you an essential list. Uh, so, as blogging, I usually use the WordPress platform. It's the only platform that I suggest as the best one. And uh, in those platforms, you would have a, a limited amount of plugins. Uh, there are some uh, that I always use. For instance, I have a SEO by Yoast, which is the best plugin for uh, search engine optimization. And you also want to have W3 Total Cache for as a caching plugin that speeds up your website. Uh, apart from that, I usually use Feedly as my main feed reader. And uh, I also use uh, Facebook interest lists uh, that not everybody knows about. Facebook has this great tool called interest lists uh, that lets you discover new pages or new people in your uh, in your niche, in your market. And that's so my second feed reader that I recommend. And uh, something else that you want to have is the monitoring. Uh, as monitoring, I suggest Google Analytics, which is the most powerful in instrument. And, and another thing that you might want to use is, is a newsletter system as MailChimp or, or Aweber. Great advice. Um, very, very specific uh, and very good tools. Um, you use these tools to grow your blog. Maybe you could talk to us about how you grew your blog to over half a million readers. I'm sure a lot of people who have blogs want to know. Mm. <laughs> and that's something that I didn't plan, that for sure. So it wasn't planned. It's actually that it came and uh, that eventually will come in every blog if you follow just specific simple rules. Uh, you just have to uh, keep yourself um, focused on the readers that you have. So on what people are looking for, on what people will find in your website. So you create every piece of content, keeping that in mind. Um, you get new ideas by readers, you get new ideas by Google, we'll talk about that. Uh, but about my blog specifically, I, I can say that actually in the first years, my I, I, I am not proud about my blog during the first years because I was writing about tips and tricks on Facebook, simple tips and tricks. It was uh, a blog that I had there uh, as one of the many blogs that I had. Uh, I wasn't looking at it in a professional way and so it wasn't growing that much. But as we said, as soon as I, I changed my way of looking at it, it, everything changed. So I started providing good piece of content, valuable piece of content. And when you do that, um, you see yourself as uh, becoming an authority in that market. And so you grow your community and people will, will start sharing your content uh, because it's, they believe it's the best content that they can find on the web. And it, and it is, for sure. And so with that, you, you grow and grow, and you get to a million reader very fast. Um, now, <laughs> in growing, you, you're referencing creating content. Uh, it, it sounds like by creating content, you are driving a lot of organic. Where does most of your traffic to Truki Facebook come from? Yes, you're right. Uh, it comes from organic, so for search engines, and uh, most of all from Google. So when we talk search engines, it's usually 90% from Google, even more. And then the second source of traffic is uh, social networks, so in my case, Facebook, of course. And then another one is referral website. But yeah, the, the main one is organic. Um, because my blog is about tips and tricks, and so people look for them into uh, search engines. Good, good. So then in your content creation, because it's organic, uh, 
you must be thinking a lot about search engine optimization uh, to optimize for those searchable keywords, the things that people are looking for. Um, how do you start writing a blog post, and uh, how does SEO uh, play into that content creation? Um, okay, a blog post. Uh, okay, SEO. I I can describe SEO as the the way that you look at your reader. <laughs> let's let's explain it like that. If you if you focus on your reader, that's the best search engine optimization that you can do because search engines are doing that. They want to show the content the readers uh, like, and so. Uh, when you focus on your reader, you're already doing the best search engine optimization. Then, for sure, you'll have some little tips that I can give you. Uh, for instance, keeping a good amount of words in your article, so 500, or for the English market, we could say 900 or 1,000 words in your blog post. Um, you want to optimize your blog post with the keywords. Uh, you want to do a little bit of research on uh, what people are looking for. So I usually uh, go to Google and use the Google Suggest feature, and from that you can already uh, see what people are looking for. Um, and then I just optimize title, description, and I use a good title structure inside the article. I use uh, very beautiful images uh, with uh, alt and title text. Um, and I just, I always keep in my mind the reader. So, and I put myself into their minds and I see what uh, would I, why would I read that blog post and uh, what uh, would I do after reading that blog post. So, there are other blog posts similar to that. So, if I can write other pieces of information similar to that one, that's already something good. Uh, or if I can uh, categorize my blog in a good way, that's something also that Google likes and that readers like. As you see, Google and readers, is it, they have the same variables in their algorithm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the best way. Great, great advice. And uh, for those uh, newcomers to blogging or SEO in general, uh, Fabrizio shared a lot of value. Uh, meaning he creates content for readers, providing value to readers, and then optimizes that uh, content for search engines to index, from uh, using images to uh, convey the content and then correctly titling it, adding alt attributes, uh, title and meta description of that content, um, things that you have to be thinking about. Uh, you know, creating it for the user also means making it easier for them to find that information, which Fabrizio has done a fantastic job uh, over the year. And that brings me to the, the I don't want to say the hard question, Fabrizio, but we all want to know, um, you know, not too many blogs talk about this, but monetization. Mm -hmm. um, how did you monetize Tricky Facebook over the years and turn it into uh, an income, a revenue, and a business for you? Okay, my main um, source of income in the blog has been Google AdSense, and I, I've been overall quite happy with it. Uh, AdSense gives me the freedom to concentrate the blogging and um, keeping an overall constant income per visit. So as soon as you grow, uh, the income grows with you. Um, I have also been uh, using other ad networks, uh, but at least for the Italian market, I I kept going back into Google AdSense as the best one. And this is the direct way that I monetize my blog. Then there are all the indirect way, um, like uh, I'm every day I'm contacted by businesses for one-on-one -on -one consultancy sessions for business training for workshops, seminars, uh, conferences, all that. It's a second way of monetizing a website. Very good, and you've done a good job of that. Uh, have you kept the same ads the entire time? And maybe you could share with us um, how many ads you use in your blog and maybe their placement on your blog and, and what's worked for you through your experimentation. 
Okay, we could go back to the to the previous questions. Uh, so when we said about focusing on your readers, so if you if you focus on your reader, you don't want to uh, fool your blog with uh, ten ads with pop-ups and all those kinds of uh, floating ads that you find today in the internet. So readers don't like them, and so you shouldn't use them. My my policy, my personal policy, is the one of Google. So I use just three, maximum of three ads per page, and I've been um, doing many experiments into finding the best placement for the for those ads. So I found that the readers on the web uh, read the content as an F. So if you see as an F, uh, then people look at it in the in a vertical way so in the left column of your blog you should focus the main content so the, your article your blog post will be in the left column and that's where you want to put your ads so I, I have um, as I said three pieces of ads I have one in the top left one in the middle and one in the bottom and those are the best placement that I found to work best good and so uh, to Clarify, you basically are putting ads where the content is being consumed, and from that, I hear you not putting it in the sidebar, which you see a lot of blogs do. Um, are you, through your testing, saying that the sidebar didn't perform as well as your content ads? Exactly. The My bottom ad performs better than my top <laughs> sidebar ad. Uh, because of because of the reading as an F that I said you um, that I told you. So if you read as an F, uh, then you first read the vertical way, then you go into the sidebar. And so even as a business perspective, so not just as a blogging, as a business, you wanna put your relevant ads. Uh, so your relevant content that can be a service that you provide, a uh, consultancy, a seminar, whatever, uh, you want to put it in, into the content. And, and that's a great tip. Um, what a lot of businesses don't do and a lot of marketers don't do, bloggers do this more often, is advertise themselves in their blog content, um, whether it be their services, and in place of like ads are ads perform with a certain click through rate and a certain appeal. So whether it be uh, a law firm, a venue, uh, an entertainment company, um, even uh, a neighborhood localized store, in your blog content, make sure you can include advertising for yourself in the things that you want, your special offers and and your uh, offerings and value propositions. It's a great advice. Um, still talking about blogging specifically. Uh, what makes for a good blog post? Uh, I know each uh, you know category of blog, each topic uh, may differ, um, but maybe the content structure, audience, title, uh, with keywords, research. Uh, in your experience, Fabrizio, what makes for good blog uh, a good blog post? Actually, the list that you already gave is very good, and uh, I like the order too. So if you say the content, it's very important. The structure of this content, so the titles that you want to use. The audience, so when you write uh, the content, you keep in mind your audience, so your reader. Uh, and also then um, the title keyword, as you said, the research. So uh, you want to research uh, for the best keyword that you want to put in your title. I would add also a description. Um, that's something that the plugin that I told you before, so SEO by Yoast, lets you do very nicely. So you want to put title and description, and um, keeping in mind your readers and uh, and the keywords. Um, what I've been experiencing uh, um, is that a good a good blog post should always solve a problem, uh, and should do this as fast as as he can. So, yeah, content is the king, as we usually uh, read on the web, but only if uh, satisfy the reader's need. So, uh, people are in the search engines because they have problems. So, they look for a problem, they want to find a solution. So, you want to provide that solution. 
in your in your blog post. It's great advice. Um, you have been blogging for a long time, uh, and especially as blogging has grown uh, over the past decade, and and there's many great bloggers now, and and people leading the charge, and more and more people are jumping on board to the blogosphere and and contributing content, but maybe uh, use yourself as a great example. Tell us a little bit about your blogging career um, and how you know that's uh, evolved over time. Uh, okay, uh, blogging is uh, for sure a great career, uh, even if I never uh, looked at it as a career, or better, I started looking at career when I realized that, that it could be a career, because it may be an expert in my field. But what I realized um, after all those years is that blogging is, uh, is a technological service. I mean, we are today in, inside the Internet. We are talking right now to a Google Plus Hangout, so we are through our computers, uh, through a computer. And so uh, blog, blogging is the same is the same way, is in the same way uh, having this kind of, uh, of relationships between the writer and the readers. I see that today, if you want to have a career in blogging, you shouldn't just focus in blogging. You should uh, work in order to meet your readers in the real life. So um, I always say that technology were built to facilitate our relationship and not to substitute them. So if, uh, if you think about meeting your readers, so in workshop, conferences, seminars, or meeting the businesses, uh, doing consultancy uh, in person, uh, that, will, that will be a great career because you'll go outside your room, outside the, the online world, and you go offline as well. So, that's how I see the blogging as a career. That's good. And um, something important from that is we often hide behind the technology, um, both as internet marketers, digital marketers, and, and even businesses who are using it to uh, drive sales and interest into their business. Uh, but it's not a replacement tool, as you, as you stated. It doesn't you know, leave us from not participating in in-world activities and meeting face-to-face, -face, uh, and that's critical. And you've done a, a terrific job expanding the digital horizon to uh, a face-to-face -face one. Um, if we were speaking specifically to bloggers, because you've say, stated a few times that, you know, if you would have known something early on, it would have helped uh, the learning gap uh, and, and really accelerate, but you've had to experiment and learn by doing. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to bloggers that would help them grow their online presence or maybe just stand out more online, uh, what would it be? I think this is related to, the, to my previous answer. Um, what, I, uh, what I suggest to everyone is to look at their personal branding. So your online success, everything that you do in the online, it starts from uh, your personal branding. So you want to study yourself and position your abilities and your uniqueness in the online market as well as you do in, into the offline market. So also something about personal branding is that, uh, as you said, uh, many digital marketers today create uh, their image online. So I, when I create my image online, it shouldn't be different from the image that I have offline. Because then when you go into the, the real world and you meet those people who are your readers or businesses, whoever you meet, you will find yourself as a completely different person. And that's something that will not help your career at all. So you want to have the same professional image in the online and the offline world. So that's for sure the, the best piece of advice that I can give to everyone. So being the most authentic to you uh, is the best step for us. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's uh, terrific uh, advice, especially since uh, you've learned that over the years. Um, if you could do 
this whole thing over again, or uh, or give yourself advice, you know, to the young Fabrizio who started blogging, mm. uh, you know, doing the entire blog over again. What would you have done differently? Mm. Well, uh, for sure, uh, many things that I've been doing have been wrong, and uh, no one should ever be uh, ever feel bad about it because we, when we grow, we do something wrong, and then we find a way into doing it right, and we learn about it. So this is how life is, and this is how a blog is, and an online growth is. So, but what I would have done. It's the thing that we discussed into the first questions. I would have looked uh, into blogging as a professional tool uh, in the very early days. Instead, I was following a different career, and so I wasn't looking at it as a professional uh, career, as a, as a professional opportunity. I was looking at it as a usual passion, as an hobby. I was blogging weekly uh, or even daily sometimes, but with with no professional perspective. When I just turned, the way I looked at it, it everything changed. And so that's what I would have done. Another thing is that I, I've been always focusing into the Italian market, but today I'm happy to announce that we uh, we co-founded Trix Facebook uh, in 2009, and today we rebuilt it. And um, so we are starting to provide very valuable content for the English world as well. And this is something that I should have started uh, back in 2009 too. Yes, we, we welcome you to the English market. Um, and uh, Fabrizio announces uh, a very important uh, transition, uh, both for uh, me, Yuhur Network, and Fabrizio on Truki Facebook. Uh, he will now be... Uh, authoring tricksfacebook.com, uh, giving valuable case studies to the years of experience of Facebook management um, for both businesses and for uh, personal brands. Uh, that you will go from content to advertising, and it will run the gamut. Um, we look for it to be a very valuable resource for everybody, and uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to either reach out to me or Fabrizio. Um, we also welcome, as I mentioned uh, in the start of our show, uh, Fabrizio as a digital marketer for Yuhur Network. Uh, it's, it's long overdue, my friend, and uh, collaboratively uh, with the team we have here, um, Yuhur is happy to segue into Italy, and Fabrizio uh, is welcomed here to California. Uh, okay, I want to be respectful of your time, um, so if someone wants to find you, Fabrizio, and, and ask you questions, um, where can they find you? I'm happy to, to answer to all the questions. They can find me uh, to Trix Facebook, as we said. So tricksfacebook.com, you'll find all the way uh, for contacting me. I'm, of course, available on Facebook. i got a personal page and a public page. and You can reach me on Google+, on Twitter, you know, everywhere. <laughs> and of course, if you are Italian and you've been watching this English interview, uh, truckyfacebook.com. Yes, of yes. course. Uh, again, thank you, my friend. Uh, all of our notes from today's conversation will be available in uh, the show notes of this video uh, with the appropriate links to different things we've mentioned. Uh, feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions, and uh, have a great day. Thank you, Fabrizio. Thanks to you. Thank you very much.